There you are sitting in your living room, enjoying yourself, sun shining through the window, and suddenly you see dust particles floating through the air. And it makes you think, when was the last time I changed my furnace filter? The three things we're gonna cover in this video that is all you need to pay attention to when choosing an air filter includes the MERV rating, the surface area, and the structure or construction of the air filter. Let's jump right in. As you go to choose an air filter, and again, ignore all that marketing, the number one thing I want you to pay attention to is the MERV rating. MERV rating stands for Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value, which is simply an easy way to quantify how good is this filter compared to the next one at filtering out different sizes of particulates. MERV rating is created by ASHRAE, which is the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and air conditioning engineers. Now with MERV, the first thing you need to understand is the higher the number, the greater the efficiency or filtration that you'll have. For example, here I have a MERV 10 and a MERV 8. Now the 10 is going to filter out not only more particulates, but particulates of a smaller size. Now you'll see MERV ratings anywhere from one all the way up to 20. In your mind, you're probably thinking, I'm gonna get the highest one I possibly can to give me the cleanest air possible. And while that thought is good, higher is not always better. While yes, it will clean the air, the other thing you need to keep in mind is your furnace or air handler system has to draw that air through the filter. And when you have a very restrictive air filter, it causes a lot of stress on the system, which can lead to early wear of some components and also it minimizes the air transfer through the system, making it run longer and actually be less efficient from an energy perspective. To give a different representation of stress that filters put on the system, think about different sizes of straws. If you take a very small straw like this one, place it in your mouth and try to draw air or liquid through it, it's quite difficult to do. Versus if I take a larger straw and do the same thing, it's significantly easier to draw air through. So again, higher number is not always better. So choosing an air filter is very much a balance of clean air while not causing excessive stress on your system. A common resident filter is going to be a MERV 7 or a MERV 8 and that's very much going to reduce the stress on your system. If you're like me, I do like to have slightly cleaner air so I prefer to use something higher like a MERV 10. If this content is helpful be sure to hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Also I would ask you to get up right now, pause this video, go down, look at your furnace filter and see what MERV rating it is. And drop it in the comments below. I'm very curious to see viewers out there what you are using. The next key point to talk about is surface area. Now when you go to buy a filter, your furnace is going to require a specific size. In my case, a 16 inch by 25 inch by one inch filter. So why does surface area matter and how can I change it if I've got a specific size of filter? The greater the surface area, the more opportunity for air to flow through and the less resistance there's going to be of air flowing through the filter. Now it's very challenging to change a filter size without an HVAC professional to come out and adjust your filter box. However, there are things you can pay attention to as a homeowner. For the fixed size of filter, really the only way to increase the surface area is by changing the number of pleats that are in the filter. The filter I use in my own furnace is a MERV 10 and it has 21 pleats. This other MERV 10 that I picked up at the store as a demonstration only has 17 pleats. The fewer number of pleats gives it less surface area if you were to spread them out and compare them. Here's a quick demonstration showing the pressure drop across these filters using my manometer to show you that it's not only just MERV rating that makes a difference, but also the surface area of that filter. These filters that I like to use when I measure with my manometer to check the pressure drop across the filter, it's still pretty high and I don't particularly like it. The manufacturer filter that I like to use now has what's called a mini pleat one inch filter, which increases the number of pleats greater than what I'm currently using, which will increase the surface area and reduce that pressure drop across that filter. Now these filters that I use, I actually buy from Amazon. It's a company called Nordic Pure, which is a very well 
well-known company for creating filters. Again, the name of the filters really don't matter because it's, it's all about the MERV rating and that efficiency. I will drop links down below in the description so you can see what it is that I'm using and the different options they have compared to what you see at a store and what's in your furnace today. Now the third item that I want to talk about, which is the structural integrity of the filter, is one of the most important for preventing other issues with your system, specifically up in your air conditioning A-coil. Now most people are going to say that air filter cleans the air to give you, the human, the best breathing opportunity. And you're right, but the other thing to remember is with air conditioning, there is what we call an A-coil that is sitting above the blower in your furnace after that filter. It's important that clean air goes up through that A-coil because if dust, dirt, debris, hair flows through the system and into that A-coil, it will block off the airflow, giving you significantly reduced efficiency on your air conditioning system, costing you more money. So why is filter structure so important? Well, I need that filter to stay rigid and in place and stop all those particulates let the air go through the filter media, not around it. One of the main reasons I've used these Nordic Pure filters for a long time is they're very structurally stable. They have bracing on both sides and they just don't twist. Compared to this other DuPont filter I picked up at the store that has bracing on just one side, it is significantly less stable. When you get increased restriction on a filter like this and it twists or it bows, air and debris can get around that filter up into that A-coil and get stuck, causing you more maintenance and bigger expenses. These particular filters are so flimsy that when I put them into my furnace and ran it, I actually had a brand new one buckle and bend, letting air go around it. While these are brand new, I can tell you I will not use them in my furnace. Let's do a quick recap. When you're going to buy an air filter, ignore all the marketing. Step number one, pay attention to the MERV rating. Number two, to be able to reduce that stress on your system, increase the surface area of the filter. And number three, commonly overlooked, get one with good structural integrity. Now don't forget my challenge, hit that pause button right now. Go find your furnace, remove your filter, and take a look and see what is the MERV rating. Let me know in the comments below. Again, hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos. Since we're on the topic of HVAC, you might also check out these videos over here regarding air conditioner maintenance to keep yours running at peak efficiency to maximize cooling and minimize energy usage, which costs you less money. Thanks for tuning in and learning about air filters with me. I'm James with Learn From Dad. Stay curious, friends.